Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this expansion for Memoir 44, The Battles of Kalkin Goal. Uh, it has two breakthrough and two overlord scenarios. Uh, this is a campaign that I've been playing against the internet over the past few well, it's getting to be a couple months now, uh, but uh, we try to do at least one a week. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that this week or next, though, so I figured I'd put this up so that uh, we can uh, just kind of not really get the review out of the way, but just so that we can provide some closure, because this is a great expansion, and I don't mean to uh, overshadow the rest of the review or anything like that, but... Um, a lot of neat stuff in here, a lot of neat battles and scenarios. So let's get down to the table, take a look at what you get, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. Alright, so starting off, I think I should mention that you do need the base set of the game uh, at the very least, possibly even more than that, to play this campaign. Um, there are some other little things that might be necessary, especially if you play the Overlord scenarios that are in here. Uh, you'll need more than just the core set, but more often than not, you'll just need the core set to uh, make sure that you have enough models for everything. If you want to have the uh, actual Japanese troops against the actual models for the Russian Red Army, then you'll also need to pick up, I believe it's the Eastern Front and the Pacific Theater expansions as well, at least uh, one copy of each. So there is that. Uh, this is not a standalone game at all. Uh, so if as you look at the rule book here though, it's, it does give you, first of all, uh, now I've written in it, keeping track of all of the different games and scores that we've had and all that kind of stuff, but it, it gives you, first of all, simplified campaign rules. There are more difficult campaign rules that you can use, for example, in the, in the campaign book one and two, uh, but these are simplified versions of those, so there is that. Um, uh, basically, the simplified campaign rules is basically in between each scenario, you have an attrition rule, and uh, then campaign reserves as well. Uh, so that's just a role that you'll have to make. And then they also go over uh, all of the new units that you're going to be having in these scenarios. First of all, you're gonna have the uh, Type 97 T keys. Uh, you also have the BA 10s. Uh, the armored cars that they have. Some of the scenarios, at least one that I remember, uh, uses Molotov cocktails. The Japanese forces use those. And then the Russians also have flamethrower tanks as well. So uh, those are different things that you can do. And then, you know, this is all just uh, other languages of the same stuff. And then you have the different scenarios that are going to be in it. Uh, you have, I believe it's uh, six scenarios. Uh, I'm sorry, seven scenarios all together uh, and then there is also an eighth that is used uh, uses one of the uh, breakthrough maps uh, so there are there's a lot of great stuff of course it comes with the historical flavor uh, all of the different special rules that are used um, and then of course the different uh, win conditions for example here the Soviet infiltration uh, the Soviets will be going first uh, the Japanese will be going second. You need five medals for victory. Gives you all of the different terrain tiles that you need for the scenario. Uh, so, and and these will of course use the uh, the board that comes in the base set of Memoir 44. Uh, there are in the campaign there are two. If I can just show you real quick, there are two. This one right here, the Bain Sagan Heights, is a breakthrough map, which uses one side of one of the maps that comes in the expansion, and then the last one. Uh, tightening the noose is also a breakthrough map and that is on the other side of that breakthrough map and then there is also a two-sided map for uh, an overlord two overlord scenarios so that's the uh, book that comes with the uh, expansion and then you also have all of these models you get six uh, Type 97 uh, tankette models for the Japanese, and then you also have these six uh, BA-10 armored car models that are used by both sides, but, I mean, the Russians had the BA-10s. Then you also have all of these tokens that will come. Uh, there are tank buster units, machine gun units, mortars, uh, big guns with their targeting icons here. Here are the uh, TK uh, tokens in case 
uh, that uh, you didn't have enough of these for some reason or another. Uh, these are the Molotov cocktail tokens that uh, they will be using and so forth and so on. Different kinds of uh, different landings and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this is what you're going to get. Let me, do, let me do show you the map though before we start talking about my final thoughts. All right, so off the bat, this is the first breakthrough map that is in here. And as you can see, it has all of the terrain already put on the board. So using these breakthrough maps are really cool for that specific uh, instance is that uh, they already have all the terrain out there so you don't have to take time to set up all the terrain uh, you do still have to put out all of the uh, different uh, models and that type of stuff and different kinds of extra terrain effects that are going to come uh, with playing the game but the terrain is already there and that can take uh, probably a big chunk of your setup time this is the uh, tightening the noose uh, scenario that is the last in the campaign and then on the other side you have the bain sagan heights uh, which we have already done uh, online so you can go check that out as well but as you can see these maps are really great on top of that they have all of your extra you know unit cards and and different rules that are right on the on the map for you so it really makes the game play a lot uh, smoother and a lot tighter because you don't have to be flipping through books and, and charts and all that other kind of stuff to find rules so this is the breakthrough map uh, you have one side on this side and then one side on the other over there and it's actually a longer map uh, than what you're used to so I guess you could say it's kind of a portrait uh, style map instead of the landscape style map that you would find normally in most scenarios. And then quite larger than what you just saw is the uh, one of the Overlord maps. This is the Kalkungol in, in, Encirclement uh, scenario and uh, basically it is the size of two baseboards put together. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, fields of battle and um, yeah, it's it's two baseboards put together, but just like the breakthrough scenarios, it has all of the terrain already on it. It has all of the different uh, different kinds of rules, uh, cards that are out there that will help you guys understand how to play it. It also gives uh, the number of uh, cards you're going to have. You're going to see who goes first or second, um, and so there you have it. It's a uh, really neat setup. These these paper maps, they're a little bit, I will say they're a little fragile. They, they If you're not careful, they can rip uh, easily on the creases, but um, for their shortcomings, they are still very, very useful and, and very um, efficient in, in getting the game set up. On the other side, this is the, the Kalkungol Encirclement, and then on the other side, we have a, a pretty cool looking map as far as I can as far as I'm concerned uh, this is the cap Torokina um, landings uh, Cape Torokina landings and so uh, again I, I really like the look of this map I haven't played this yet but I want to get it to the table uh, because I just like the way it looks uh, but uh, this is pretty interesting as well uh, you have of course all of the different rules that you need all of the different terrain that's necessary. Uh, so this is the other side of the Overlord map. Let's get back up top for my final thoughts. So as far as final thoughts for this expansion campaign from MR44, um, this is one of the first times I've, I guess I've actually done a review. I've done a lot of informational videos about a lot of Memoir 44 stuff, but I think this is one of the first times that I've ever done an actual review for an expansion. Uh, I, I could just be brain farting though, so I apologize if that's the case. However, uh, this is a super uh, campaign. I, I love this campaign. Now, I've only played through seven of the eight campaign scenarios, and I haven't played the two Overlord maps either. So there is that. Um, but I don't think I need to to give my opinion on the campaign in general. Um, I really do enjoy Overlord-type scenarios as well, so I don't think I'm going to dislike uh, those different uh, Overlord scenarios that come in, 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 the, in the expansion. But um, I will say that these two armies have been probably the most fun I've had playing Memoir 44 in a long time. Not that I've disliked playing it in the past, 
But these two armies and the their different abilities and their different shortcomings and, and the synergy that happens between them has been a really fun and challenging campaign for me. And so I really like that. I like how the, uh, uh, the Japanese infantry must... Uh, not retreat. They, they must ignore uh, that first flag. I love that. Um, I, I also, even though it's, it can be a real hindrance, I also like the Commissar token for the Russian Red Army and having to kind of choose your move ahead of your, what, your, what your opponent is doing. Sometimes you can kind of guess right. You know, it's almost like what what play is the offense going to run so that I can run the right defense? That's the kind of feel that it gives. And I love that tension that is in the game. I love the game already. Uh, it's top ten, top five. So you, you get that I already like the game. But this campaign and these two armies have been incredibly fun to play. So with that having been said... Uh, the pros here are, first of all, it is, it, it, it's great that it, it shines a spotlight on an otherwise generally overlooked part of, of World War II. And it brings those different efforts that both sides made into the light a little bit more. And, and that's good from an educational point of view. Um, on top of that, the second pro is the fact that uh, what I just mentioned about the two armies and how well they they challenge each other uh, to doing uh, the best they possibly can do. The, 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 the Japanese army of being able to move two, and if they're in uh, close combat, then they get to assault as well. And then on top of that, they get an extra die if they're still at full strength. Those, oh my goodness, it's so powerful. But at the same time, it can also be counteracted by different things that are going on in the game from the uh, Red Army side of the board as well. So I really really enjoy these two armies uh, and how well they worked together. A third thing that I really enjoyed about this uh, campaign was the use of cavalry. Uh, I haven't played with cavalry before in Memoir 44, and th this was the first time I've done it, and I really enjoyed it. They're a great infantry-type unit that kind of feels like a cross between infantry and a tank. Uh, so I know that sounds strange, but that's pretty much what cavalry was, right? I really enjoyed that, just mobile infantry. So I really did enjoy that. Uh, I thought it was great and uh, a great uh, bonus to the uh, campaign. Now, as far as cons are concerned, I don't think I really have any. The only one minor con is the fact that the, the maps are paper, and uh, that makes them a little bit delicate, uh, especially along those crease lines that they're inevitably going to have. But I, 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 I understand that this is something that can be avoided simply by being very careful with your maps. So it, it is a very light con. Uh, I don't think it's going to uh, weigh heavily. Well, I know <laughs> it's not going to weigh very heavily on my final rating of this campaign. So with all that having been said, I, I think that uh, we're going to give this campaign a strong 9 out of 10 as far as how much I have enjoyed this campaign uh, leading up till now. I'm not finished with it. I have one more scenario to do against the internet, but I have so much enjoyed this. It is a strong 9 out of 10 for me. I really enjoy it a lot. And I think if you guys have the ability to uh, go out there and grab it, you really should because uh, I think it takes everything that makes Memoir 44 great and smashes it into eight power-packed, uh, energy-packed scenarios. Uh, so that's it. And a 9 out of 10 for... Um, the Calc and Goal campaign for Memoir 44. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side.